Austin. Breaking news, the United States just released a white paper for the U.S. digital dollar. The altcoin engine, Cardano, Tezos, and others are making news. And Bitcoin in the United States in 2020 just got super exciting. Like always, let's jump in. Samsung blockchain wallet now allows users to buy and sell crypto via Gemini. That means if you have select Samsung phones, you now have an instant on-ramp to buy and sell Bitcoin. Instant fiat gateway. It's crazy how big this is. And it's, it's not for all Samsung phones, but the Samsung blockchain wallet is a non-custodial crypto wallet and is available in select smartphones, such as the Galaxy S10 and S20 series. So how many people you think own the S10 and the S20? Well, according to records, as early as Q1 of 2020 this year, the Galaxy S20 series shipped 8.3 million units in just Q1 of 2020 this year, and the Galaxy S10 and S10 Plus totaled 10.3 million units Q1 in 2019. So this is big. And again, Gemini is the first U.S. exchange to integrate into Samsung's blockchain wallet. This is big for the U.S., but this is also big for Canada. Samsung blockchain users in the US and Canada can now connect to Gemini's mobile app to buy, sell, and trade crypto after the company's built-in integration between the two applications. And in a direct quote, crypto, it's not just a technology, it's a movement, Tyler Rinklevoss, CEO of Gemini said in a press release. We are proud to be working with Samsung to bring crypto's promise of greater choice, independence, and opportunity to more individuals around the world. Now Samsung blockchain wallet customers can buy crypto in a simple, elegant, and secure way on Gemini. Huge win for Gemini, huge win for Bitcoin. Like always, let me know what you think down below in the comments. But next piece of news before altcoins, the United States Digital Dollar Project releases a white paper laying out the groundwork for the US central bank digital currency. Also pretty big news. And I'll take you through the white paper in a second. It's 50 pages, pretty simple. But first, just an overview. This is being released. This was released on May 28th, the Digital Dollar Project, which is the foundation or the organization behind this, the Digital Dollar Project, released its white paper, a 30-page, I count 50, but a 30 to 50-page document detailing the potential applications of a CBDC. So potential applications, meaning the U.S. government hasn't implemented this yet, but they put it out there. This is what they want to do. And who is the leadership behind the digital dollar project? The digital dollar was founded by former leaders of the CFTC, the Commodity Futures Trading Commission, and professional services company Accenture. One of those founders is Daniel Gorfine, the head of the CFTC's fintech office until this past fall. So the who's who of former regulators in the United States, and what are these potential applications of a U.S. digital dollar? Well, the paper charts out an impressive array of use cases for a digital dollar. For example, one of many things mentioned in that white paper, a digital dollar use case could be the colossal remittance corridor between the United States and Mexico. It also eagerly looks for future pilot programs to test out these use cases. So faster, cheaper cross-border payments is one of their potential use cases. Also, an easier way to send money from the government, for example, get your stimulus check. Also, through tokenization of the digital dollar, you can separately look at government benefits programs and how to disperse an individual's money if they get some sort of government benefits. So all the basic things that you'd expect when a dollar goes digital. The thing I want to highlight and what I want to show you in the white paper is the centralization and the distribution of the digital dollar. In a direct quote, a digital dollar will be distributed through the existing two-tiered architecture of commercial banks and regulated intermediaries. So just be aware if the government tells you that this is for you, the digital dollar is for you. Well, I guess, but it's really more for the banks. If we scroll down to page nine of this CBDC white paper, two-tiered distribution model of physical cash and tokenized digital dollars. It has two tiers above you. This is you, the individual, with your digital wallet, 
retail transactions to a local business, we're at the bottom. At the top, who gets direct control of the digital dollar? It's the Fed, obviously, and the Treasury. They're at the top of the system. Then in the middle, financial institutions. These are your commercial banks who do wholesale transactions with other commercial banks with their digital dollars. And then hopefully it filters down to you and me. So it is a way for the government to just maintain power. Again, this is the power they already have. It just makes it easier for them. But it does also make it more efficient in retail as well. Tokenization can provide a new level of portability, efficiency, programmability, and accessibility, ensuring the tokenized digital dollar's ability to complement existing formats of money while simultaneously modernizing our payments and financial infrastructures. So this is coming soon. We are one step closer, and at least with Bitcoin, we have a form of money that's without government control. Like it, support it. Next piece of news before Cardano, Engine's new Minecraft plugin lets players spawn blockchain assets. So this is pretty big too, because Minecraft, obviously one of the most popular video games, now has an Engine plugin, or Engine has a Minecraft plugin. An engine, already in the last three months, engine, the altcoin, has been going on a pretty decent run, pump. Gaming in general is already hugely accessible to tech-minded, innovation-minded individuals. And now this Minecraft plugin, it's another big step. So what is this plugin and what does this allow gamers to do? Well, built by gaming startup Engine, EngineCraft is an open-sourced blockchain plugin that enables players to spawn assets in the Minecraft Java edition without the need to write any code. So you don't have to be a coder. You can just, if you download this plugin, you can start spawning assets on the blockchain. The tool works by dropping the EngineCraft file into a player's server plugins folder, where they can then begin integrating and distributing blockchain assets in the form of tokens. Okay, so if you play Minecraft already, and then you're able to integrate these tokens, assets. Let's dig deeper. What else can you do? The new offering allows server hosts to create their own localized Minecraft economies by providing their players with tangible ownership over in-game items and currencies. It also allows players to securely trade their assets in peer-to-peer, -peer, P2P fashion through the server or external chat rooms and digital trading platforms like the Engine Marketplace. So this could add a little bit of immutability in these Minecraft ecosystems. And Engine, here's a direct quote from Engine co-founder and CTO. EngineCraft is the beginning of a new era for sandbox games. Players now have a tangible stake in their gaming worlds, and server owners can create new kinds of addictive experiences by using branded collectibles and items with scarcity and value in the digital universe. Interesting. If you play Minecraft and you will be using this, let me know down below in the comments. Before Ethereum, before Tezos, Cardano. Charles Hoskinson has revealed the launch dates for Cardano's Shelly, the next era in Cardano. It will be rolling out the network between June 30th and July 7th. So in this week, expect Cardano's Shelly mainnet to launch. In a direct quote from Charles, if everything works without a hitch, June 30th is when we're shipping Shelly, he added, saying that if something goes wrong, it might be delayed to July 7th. So we've obviously heard dates in the past before. Obviously, they could get pushed back. But as of now, expect them in a few short months. But next piece of news, Coinbase has rolled out Tezos staking for the UK and also some EU customers. So Tezos staking was already available to the US. And now the UK and some EU customers get it as well. So what is the return on investment? If you want to stake, if you're in the UK or the US, what's your ROI? After an initial holding period, users start receiving payouts every three days at an annual rate of 5%. So that means if everything stays the same and you started with 100 Tezos, at the end of one year, you would have 105 Tezos. Final piece of news, Altcoin Daily made the list of the five best crypto YouTubers you must follow if you're new to Bitcoin. I don't know who made this list, but Altcoin Daily made a top spot. And hey, you put us on a list, we'll proudly shout you out. We like being on lists. Uh, number five, Crypto Casey. 
not too familiar with who that is, but somebody gets value from our channel. Crypto Jeb made number four. Also, I'm not familiar, but some people are. Crypto Zombie, number three, I like him. Altcoin Daily, right here, baby. Number two, you can read what they said about us if you want, link down below. And Ivan on Tech, number one spot. Link down below, let me know what you think. But I love it. That's the video, like always, see you tomorrow.